Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally doesn't work. Um, drama in Dallas. You know, Bill Parcells used to stir things up to take the focus off players. He was the guy, the bad guy, that everybody would follow, the, the dog whistle or whatever you want to call it. He would end up kind of kicking things around so that way he protected his players. I'm not sure what Jerry Jones was doing because you heard earlier today him basically throw shade at Dez and say, you know, we never had a number one wide receiver. And you knew that Dez Bryant would definitely respond to that. And he has on Twitter, and he says, and I quote, as a receiver playing for the Dallas Cowboys, your mind has to be right because you will never see targets like OB, uh, excuse me, a uh, Antonio Brown or um, Odell Beckham Jr. or Hopkins, none of those guys. I was never schemed into things. I made things happen throughout my career. I'm Mr. 73, as in 73 touchdowns. They had Jay Witten as our number one, so Jerry was right. I'm glad because that's kind of a way of Dez responding with taking the high road instead of igniting this thing even more. I got to tell you, I hate this. I hate the dysfunction of this team right now that literally we are a soap opera. I'm home doing some paperwork and stuff today, so I'm seeing the shows and things on there. And Colin Cowherd was on with Gary Myers. Gary Myers used to be on Inside the uh, uh, NFL back in the day when it was on HBO. And just came out with a book, um, How About Them Cowboys, looking back throughout the whole franchise back in the glory days and stuff. But he really explains exactly why Jason Garrett probably won't ever get fired. And it's not good. To me. You know, Jason Garrett, um, I mean, again, it's not a disaster. It's not Dave Campbell. It's not men overboard. But the fans and the media are very tough on him. But Jerry seems to have an allegiance to Jason Garrett. How close are they? It, uh, it appears he almost treats him like a son. Like, uh, I mean, it's, were you surprised at the closeness? Or what, what did you find in that relationship while writing the book? Well, I, you know, considering how close they are, I'm kind of surprised that Jason and his wife don't actually live in the Jones Mansion <laughs> in Dallas. But they, they are that close. I think Jerry has finally opted for stability in that organization after going through a lot of coaches following Jimmy Johnson. And, you know, Jason, I, I think Jason is the perfect coach for Jerry just in terms of he lets Jerry be Jerry. He lets Jerry play with his toy this $5 billion enterprise. Um, and in, in return, uh, Jerry's been very loyal to Garrett, which I think has upset a lot of people in Dallas, especially after his decision on Sunday night not to go for it on fourth and one in overtime in Houston. Is it possible that Jerry Jones likes Dak Prescott more than Jason Garrett likes Dak Prescott and, and Jason knows it? And that Jason doesn't love Dak and looks around the league and sees Goff and Mahomes. What do you make of that? Does Jason truly believe in Dak? Well, I, right now there's no alternative. So he, he better believe in him. Otherwise, this season is going to be shot in the next couple of weeks. But, you know, Dak played so well uh, in 2016 that Romo was unable to get off the bench. He gave that concession speech around November of 2016 when he was ready to play but realized that he couldn't because Dak, I think, was in the process of winning 11 games in a row. They, and, and to that point, Romo and, and Garrett were extremely close. They used to go to Maverick games together. They, used, they went to Duke to watch them play basketball. Uh, they made that trip together. And Garrett's decision not to even allow Romo to compete to win his job back was very similar to what happened to Drew Bledsoe in 2001 in New England. And Whereas Bledsoe and, and, uh, Bledsoe, Bledsoe and Belichick were never close by any means, Romo and Garrett were very close. And, and Jason's decision not to allow um, Tony to even compete, that split up that friendship. And there was a lot of friction there at the end. 
if that hadn't happened, if they were still on good terms at the end of that season, perhaps Tony would have come back thinking he had a chance to compete for his job in training camp in 2017. Instead, he asked for his release, uh, considered signing with the Texans, and then decided not to. You know, uh, Jerry still holds a press conference after every game. He's the only owner that has a Monday radio show. Um, so when people tell me, you know, he's less involved, let me lean on. Yeah, so there's that. You know, when it comes to Jerry Jones, he feels comfortable with Jason Garrett. That's the bottom line. And maybe that's why you saw him step back from yesterday after throwing shade and saying we should have went for it to now kind of supporting Jason Garrett. But I got to be honest, I am so proud of Des Bryant. Because what Jerry Jones just did, Jerry Jones just basically threw gasoline on a dumpster fire. And Des Bryant basically calmed the whole situation. Des Bryant was the bigger man and actually makes Jerry Jones look bad for what he just did. I am, to say the least, embarrassed by what he just did. Um, I think that it was wrong what Jerry did. Our team's got some real issues from the head on down, and we got some work we got to do. Um, I know you guys, I have I've mentioned Troy Aikman in a video earlier. I want to go over later on in a separate video what Troy Aikman says he saw about Dak Prescott and his accuracy or lack thereof um, and put that all together. Um, but give me some time to get this thing squared away and we'll talk about that because I know I get accused of blaming everybody but Dak Prescott but I do know that Dak has issues that need help and need coaching to make him a better quarterback but we'll talk about that later on right now Des you my man I'm Mark Holmes this is Cowboy Joe Boo and I'll see you